In this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to get around issues when it comes to listing your product. So let's say you purchased a barcode. This may be a GS1 barcode. It may be from another company, for example, Barcodes Mania. You try and list your first, typically your first Amazon product. You go to actually save the listing and then you get an error message or you get an error message a little bit later from Amazon saying something along the lines of, you're not allowed to actually list this product. You're not the uh, proper brand owner for this particular brand of product, etc., Some sort of error message. It could be an error 5665. I've seen some other codes as well. Now, there are some complicated ways to get around this problem, but first of all, I would suggest you try this. This is a very, very simple workaround for this issue. Basically, nowadays, Amazon are kind of clamping down on everything, and they want as many people to be as brand registered on the marketplace as possible. It's easier for them in terms of liability and other issues. It's easier for sellers as well. And there's less chance of people complaining that somebody else is infringing on their trademarks and you know, you go down a rabbit hole there with this. Now, before I discuss the actual method, once you are brand registered, so once you have a trademark in your country or marketplace, you can then apply for brand registry with Amazon. And then you have a brand registry page, which is really cool. You get extra protection from Amazon. It's easy to report issues. For example, if somebody's jumping on your listing, like a hijacker um, and other technical kind of issues as well. And you can do that from a page like this. It gives you all of these options. But at the beginning, most of you as beginners, you won't be brand registered. Or even if you did apply for a trademark, it takes a while. In the US, it takes even longer. In the UK here, typically, without objections, it can still take about two or three months to get that certificate with your trademark number before you can upload it to Amazon. So if you're in that early stage, you sh still should be able to get exemption and you should still be able to list products without an official trademark. So the easiest way to do it, a lot of you might not know this, but there are special links where you can apply for an exemption. So I'm gonna show you the one for the UK right now. And also what I'll do is the actual link itself, I'll put in the description box below. So the link takes you to this page. It's basically sellercentral.amazon.co.uk forward slash GTINX forward slash browser. Now you can see here, this is a GTIN exemption page. And it says here quite clearly, if your product does not have a barcode, apply for exemption below. Note, exemption is provided for brand and category and you do not have to apply for exemption for each product. You'll be able to add as many of your products on Amazon without applying for exemption again for that particular brand or category. Now, you can have a brand name on Amazon without having a certificate and a trademark. And you can just make up this name. This could be anything you want to because Amazon don't know if you're undergoing an application at the moment for trademarking that particular word. Most often with Amazon, it's a word mark. That's what it's called. So that's when you actually register a trademark for a particular word rather than, for example, a logo, which you could also potentially do. But word tends to be the most common. So what you can do here on the exemption page, the first thing you have to do is select category for your product. So click on select. Now, let's say you were looking to sell home and kitchen items. So let's click on that one. And then it says quite clearly here for unbranded items or bundles, enter generic. So literally just type in generic here in quotation marks, exactly as they have suggested, just like so. And then what you do is you click on check for eligibility. So click on that one. And then you can see the status here with the check mark, product category, brand as generic, and then just click continue to submit proof. And now what they're asking you for is product name. And what they're asking you for is a upload of a product image. So just do that, just put your product name. So let's say for example, if it's a home and kitchen item, let's go for good old coffee cup. You can just put buy and just make up some sort of brand name if you want to buy coffees. And here's some pictures I found earlier, um, <laughs> just from the internet. So I've just added a couple of different angles of coffee cups. And then if you scroll down, click on submit request. Now, where do you get the pictures from? I mean, if you have a product already, use those pictures, or you can use some other random product in that category, either buy one from Amazon and just download the pictures from there, or find some on the internet. So many different ways you can do it. You can get it off a supplier website, for example, as well. Click submit request. And then it says on the next page, we are reviewing your request. We'll email you the status within 48 hours. You're not required to apply again for each product separately because exemption will be provided for brand and category. So just keep an eye on that, keep an eye out for emails, and then you can go back to your home page. And that's it, that's one way to do it. Now this does definitely doesn't always work, but a lot of the time I've found, especially with some of our students as well, 
if they do get that error message, which they, they, it doesn't always happen, especially if you're using GS1 barcodes, but if you do, this is a way around it. Now, if you're not based in the UK, if you're not selling in the UK, you need to type into your marketplace. For example, if it's, I don't know, if it's in Canada, for example, for that particular marketplace, you need to type in Seller Central Canada GTIN exemption or something along those lines or UPC code exemption, something like that. And then you should be able to find that link is buried somewhere in all of the trash of Amazon URLs. Once you find that, do the application and see if it then lets you list the product and get on with it. Once your product is selling well, you definitely want to work towards assigning a trademark as well. Not only does it add value to your brand anyway and stop other people copying it, but it's better because on Amazon, you get more protection and you get additional brand registry features. For example, brand analytics, which really helps you with future product research. So beginners don't get access to that level of data either. If you have any questions or if this didn't work for you and you want some more advanced tips on how to get around it, I've got about four or five different way workarounds for this particular issue. Just comment below and I'll do another video where I talk about a few of the other ways you can get around it. It's a bit of messing about, but there are a few other ways you can do it as well. Thanks very much for listening.